Hello, Ashley Rigdon, the English cartoonist in France, here to help you with cartoons once again. It's a particularly grim, wet and grey day here in France and it's an ideal opportunity to show you how to turn the face from being a flat disc with a cross on it, on which you draw all the parts of the face, and move from there to actually showing that a head is a sphere. And once you've got the sphere worked out and you've got some proper idea of how it all lays out, you can get much better emotions on the face. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive into the head as a sphere and all the emotions that you can add. Today we're moving on to um, a genuine step forward where we go from the simple flat round face to the actual sphere. I did touch on this in one of the previous recordings um, to say that you know when you're drawing cartoons most of it's about the, the head and face and expression of your character but most of these are not flat they shouldn't be flat they represent something that's real in the world so in order to achieve this as you can see I've already drawn my little circle um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to turn it into a sphere by putting some marker lines on it rather like a globe a globe in you know that you'll find in a geography class so you've got an equator going across the middle and we'll put a meridian just down here uh, I'll just change the color of that so that it's um, a bit more obvious and there'll be another one quartering out the whole of the the uh, the character so uh, as we've shown before where we've had the crosshairs on the face like this and put it we just sort of hang a nose off of the cross in the middle now the uh, the face is pointing slightly to our right so we'll we'll hang the nose right there and you can already see the sort of 3d-ness of it all happening and if we put our eyes in in their normal places um, you have to make the furthest one slightly smaller we don't have to as i say it, i've said this before there aren't any rules there's just advice when it comes to to the world of cartoons um so we put the uh, the pupils in the lower part now the ears uh, we tend to think of our ears as being stuck on the sides of our faces and they are really but they're quite a bit further towards the back than you ever really realize so they'll be hanging out like that generally and since we're getting a little bit more advanced we'll show something of an ear because as you know it's got uh, more structure to it it has lobes and odd little parts like that now you don't have to go into great detail it's not important you know you don't have to be um, uh, a, a doctor to be able to understand how to do this um, so we've got our eyes we've got our nose we can see our person is looking away to our right we'll put some eyebrows in and uh, we'll just make him reasonably content you know his day isn't too bad or her day androgynous as previously discussed this is the most basic way you can do it um, I mean that you most cartoons would involve more lines than this on the face I mean there's generally you know on, on most grown-up people's faces is the odd line like this that comes down uh, from the nose and then you've got a bottom lip as well um, and as you can see as I add these things everything becomes a little bit more impressive we can have some eyelids too let's just put some eyelids in make the line fairly thick to show that there's a a bit of a lash there and as you see on the far one the um, the lash comes out and protrudes beyond showing that it is actually eyelashes so there you have your sphere uh, and if it was a if it was a, a true globe there'd probably be some light coming in from above and you'd probably you know have a shadow here which you could easily have on your character now we'll just take him and, and have him uh, a little bit sort of happier and as we go through today we're going to explore some of the um, some of the emotions that can be put onto a 3d face that just work a lot better because it's 3d you know there i mean we'll, we'll put our our 
equator on uh, meridian. I'll take that equator right through so you can see this, the far side of the head as well. And uh, now we've, uh, we'll hang an ear on the side, put a little bit of structure on it, nothing too involved. Um, put a nose on it and this time we're going to make him quite happy. Um, so remember about the eyes if you recall in the previous one um, we showed that the the bottom of the eyes have to have that kind of little little upward curve to them to show happiness um, and we'll, we'll have the eyebrows just slanted upwards a touch that there you are and now we'll, we'll put a nice big smile on and we'll open the mouth you know so it's a proper look at me I'm happy not necessarily laughing show some teeth teeth are always good um, they can be very expressive so now you see you know a st kind of a standard happiness um, or you know so somebody is just in a, in a good mood generally they're, they're enjoying their day um, we'll, we'll move along now to facing the other way and properly laughing So when you laugh, as a rule, unless you're in one of those, you know, unless you've been told off at school, in which case you kind of stick your head down and try not to show anybody your face. But if you're laughing in a normal situation, you will tend to just tilt your head back a little. So we'll, we'll well, or even a lot, it depends really. If you're laughing really heartily, you know what it's like when people are slapping their thigh and they're laughing very heartily. Uh, they do tend to put their head right back but we'll, we'll just go this far at the moment I suppose everything I'm saying is just demonstrating that everything is quite you know there is quite fluid you could be you could achieve almost any result once you've done a little bit of work on this smiles by the way and if you, I mean if you don't let me just draw a smiley face you know the one that we all know it goes like this and it's very stylized um, but we, our faces don't tend to work that way and, and our, our smiles, our laughs, our winks, our this and that don't tend to be entirely symmetrical. So I'm lifting the near side corner of the mouth higher than the far side here and it just gives a bit more realism in a, in a world that doesn't normally have any realism. Um, let's put the, the pupils in again the simple black lines. We're still laughing like this, the normal one. We'll black in the mouth like that and we'll hang an ear off the back. Now doesn't that look much more animated than most of the ones we've been doing as a, as a sort of a, a, a full frontal where you're just looking straight on at what's a circle. We can now see that there is actually some structure to this character. So wherever possible you must try to be three quarters on. Um, except when you're doing a, a drawing where you're trying to depict things from above. But even then you might want to just consider that because it is, it is quite important. I'm now going to show somebody who's really, 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 as we would say, cheesed off, really angry. You know, something's gone wrong. And, and he's just not a happy boy. And we'll do this in three quarter uh, format because everything about it works better in the three quarter format. So hang that nose off there. Now we're going to have some eyebrows that are coming right in, really, really bunching down in the middle. Again, not quite symmetrical if we can help it. And the eyes, when somebody's angry like this, they tend to have. Well, they can either completely screw up their eyes or they can really open them up wide. And of course, the world of cartoons allows for all of this. Uh, and the unhappy mouth, which we've done in the past like that, we can now really give it some space. Like this. Teeth showing. Um, bottom lip we can even we can even hook that so we make a proper bottom lip there 
let's put that ear on it only takes a moment so we'll do that anyway also when people are um, angry like this they tend to color up a bit and so one of the things you can do is just do a little sort of a cross hatch on the cheeks because that's where it shows up most and then the person you know it increases their their anger quotient as it were so you can see that this is a far superior way of drawing than just face on um, I'm also going to just deviate slightly from this sphere uh, to show you one of the characters I use in one of my own cartoon strips or it will give a, a type of a character and it's based on the sphere because the human skull is well we've all seen them pretty roundish aren't they and if we take our meridian line and drop it but don't go underneath drop it further down and then bring the shape of the head down with it and make a, a small cleft in the chin this will make that a little bit bigger cleft in the chin because for some reason that's funny to look at on a cartoon it isn't really funny especially if you're the one I'm talking to and you've got a little cleft in your chin and you're thinking is he saying I look funny well I'm not really but it's just more interesting it's just got more more character to it so this is a character uh, from my own cartoon strip. She's a witch. And so I like to use the visual shorthand for witches. And in this case, she's got a long skinny nose like this. And she actually has a nostril like this. But in every picture, there will always be the wart on the side of the nose. Apologies to people who've got warts on their noses who aren't witches, but that's the way witches tend to be depicted. Um, we'll do the eyes in the normal way. Um, but this is meant to be a woman who's, who's fairly old. So we've got to put a few lines in. And she also, um, she tends to laugh in a kind of a naughty way um, because she's invariably trying to put some kind of a spell on somebody. Um, and, and it makes her laugh when she turns somebody into a rabbit or whatever it might be. So we give her a nice big laugh like this with a fat cheek there. So this is going to affect her eye like that. And that's where the lines come in. And this particular witch, she has a huge gap in her front teeth. I didn't want to make her completely toothless. I mean, I know that's a, again, it's another... Um, shorthand for a witch but I, I just thought the, the wart on the nose and a gap in the teeth is just, you know was was at a time of Chaucer said to be quite a winsome thing um, but because she's a witch and she's she's putting spells on people and she's laughing at their uh, discomfort we must make her look like a, a cackling woman you know, we could probably exaggerate this even more if we felt like it but I'm just going to go this far with it so she's laughing with a kind of a naughtiness about her. I haven't drawn her ears and I'm not going to because having set up this structure like this, um, what I tend to do normally when I'm drawing her is um, I go to the ink settings and uh, start, start putting a hair on well, we'll go a bit bigger than that. Start putting her hair on because it's crazy hair. I don't give her a witch's hat. Again, one must try for a little bit of originality. So I tend to give her an awful lot of hair like this. This is when you get to the inking stage. It wouldn't be anywhere near as effective or amusing if... Uh, we'd done this full face the the size of the nose wouldn't be so obvious straight on because it would be pointing at you so it would be foreshortened um, so you know there are again the great benefits of um, drawing three quarter position is that you can actually show uh, the true structure of, of the character and here we are this is she's known as Esme Gattooth and um, 
she's got a lot of hair and a lot of wild hair we've got to put lots of it coming off like this being a bit crazy but you see once you've got your your sphere in place these are the kinds of things that you can do uh, I'm not going to spend too much longer on the wonderful Esme um, now I've been doing some studying of uh, of expressions on faces and so I just want to go a little bit further because we've done angry and we've done happy but there's a world of much much more complicated or, or interesting um, emotions than that I mean if you think somebody who's in awe um, and we're going to do it in three quarters because it works best that way I can't emphasize that too much um, let's hang an ear on there because ears as a general rule, unless you're drawing a dog, ears don't um, don't have emotion. Uh, so we'll put that nose on. Everything noses aren't very emotional either, really. Um, but now we go to the eyes. This is somebody who's registering complete awe at something, and it means that the pupil in the eye goes right to the middle, and it may become very large as well. But we'll just do it like that at the moment, and the eyebrows go right up like this it's like somebody seeing a ghost um, and then the mouth well it becomes a, a drawn down shape and I like to just even show a tongue poking out because that's again funny if you saw somebody standing in the street awestruck by something going on uh, and their tongue was hanging out it would be funnier than if their tongue wasn't hanging out so that's my uh, thought process on it and we put this line in here on one over there as well on the other side to show that the face is being stretched by the by the mouth the mouth is pulling down the lower jaw obviously if you weren't a circle or a sphere I should say you'd have a very obvious jaw uh, but that's how you look when you're stricken with awe by the way if you hear anything uh, traffic noises once again it's around about lunchtime here in France and my my house fronts straight onto the main road in the town. So if you hear any cars going past, that's the reason. Um, we'll, we'll have somebody now, we've got somebody in awe, but, but we'll just go for apathy this time. Um, apathy. Who cares? Well, again, it won't be a lot of difference in the nose at all. Let's just hang that ear on there. Um, but the eyes are heavily lidded with the uh, the pupil just about showing the eyebrows are as unemotional as they could possibly be they're just straight horizontal dash marks um, and as for the mouth well it's just tum de tum it's just a little round nothing with a lip on it and if you want to show somebody who's completely apathetic that's a good way to do it I mean he really he really does look apathetic there doesn't he sorry just touching the wrong things on the screen here um, which is one of the things that happens with digital art odd things pop up on the screen um, we can also have this is the, uh, we'll go for this zany one this is a person who's um, well he could be influenced by something possibly uh, let's be let's be kind and say yes he's under the influence of something or other so it doesn't make any difference about his nose but let's have his eyes being completely different sizes and at funny angles and that the pupils are all pointing in a different direction it would be hard to do that with a real person it would be hard to get an actor to be able to do that um, but this is the wonder of the cartoon um, and now we do this funny thing where we we just give a it's almost like an extra layer an extra dimension where we make our person uh, have a, a three-quarter chin on him kind of adds to the idea of the um, the sphere as it gives a bit more geography to it 
But there you are, you've got somebody who is, right, really, let's say he's had a few of something. And we'll, we'll say he's, he's in a zany state of mind. So just to recap, what we've done here is we've taken our original circle with the crosshairs on it and we've, we've wrapped the crosshairs around a sphere. Um, and we've shown that by doing that, you can get an awful lot more in the way of, of facial emotion onto your picture than if you just go straight on. Uh, sh we shouldn't really um, say that it's it, it, you know going completely two dimensional is wrong, because as you I'm sure know, somebody like Peanuts, Charlie Brown, they're always either facing you or they're sideways on, and yet. It's about as successful um, a comic strip as it could possibly be. And I would say once again and emphasize there aren't any rules, there's just advice. Um, if we, let's just try one more. A Charlie Brown face like this. You'd normally see him like this, I think. Something like this. I haven't looked at Charlie Brown for quite some time, but he's, he's usually not very happy. Well, let's, let's not try and draw Charlie Brown, but let's go in the style of, so we'll just put a sort of a bubble hat on him and a little ear here and a little ear there it's something like that isn't he and he's usually kind of unhappy and people find that very cute I do probably you do as well but um, it's only one way of doing things and um, no rules just advice so that's the um, the sphere and the emotions put on them for this short film and um, I hope to uh, speak with you again very soon. Thank you.